we all know, DeFi is no longer the newest kid on the block, but that doesn't mean but there are no more developments on the horizon. My name is Daria Krasnova. I'm a managing editor at Being Crypto, one of the top media outlets in the world covering all things web free on 15 languages. And here I have three bright minds uh, who help us to learn exactly where the space is for the fight to grow and where new products, services, and users will come from in the next years. Before we start, can you guys please introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, I can start. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex. Um, I'm a Binance Labs uh, team member. Um, for everyone's benefit, Binance Labs is the investment arm of Binance. Uh, we've been around since 2018. Uh, we've invested in over 300 companies um, in uh, the crypto space. Uh, we are a sector agnostic, uh, which means that we invest across the entire stack, starting from uh, base layer infrastructure, such as layer ones, layer twos, um, all the way to the application layer and everything in between. So we invest in middleware, in security protocols, in um, DeFi, obviously, which is today's topic, um, gaming, and so on. Uh, and we're also a um, ecosystem agnostic um, investor, which means that we invest across different chains um, and uh, in different chains themselves. So we back various projects in in different ecosystems uh, across different layer ones and layer twos. Thank you, Joey, please. Yeah, hi everyone, uh, this is Joey. I'm the co-founder and CEO of the Kilo EX. Uh, so Kilo EX is uh, a perpetual DEX, uh, the next generation of user-friendly perpetual DEX, and I concentrate on the risk management and uh, capital efficiency. And right now we are building on the BNB chain and the OP BNB, and uh, uh, right now we have a uh, uh, like uh, growing very fast, and uh, we have got back by the Binance Labs. Thank you. Thank you. Farsik? Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Farsik. Uh, I'm the CEO and co founder of Kinza Finance. Kinza Finance is a lending protocol on BNB chain. Uh, we focus on security and we innovate on tokenomics to attract liquidity. Um, we believe a secure lending protocol is a foundation to a healthy ecosystem and a good sustainable tokenomics will attract liquidity in long term. Thanks. Thank you. So, okay, it's time to dive in. Uh, we all know DeFi came a long way, but there is always room for improvement. So, where do you guys see the most significant areas for DeFi projects to continue its growth? Uh, are there like any particular sectors or industries or regions that hold like a very huge potential for that? Uh, yeah, uh, so actually, so I want to talk about these uh, things a little bit. Uh, so previously I built a uh, Kilo EX, I was working in the central exchanges for years. So uh, so for my understanding, there is a lot of like a emerging markets uh, and a lot of people over there, they have don't have a bank or the honor bank peoples. Uh, they use a uh, DeFi or the like uh, Perpetex to have the access to the uh, like the traditional finance can provide to their users. They can use a DeFi to make the payment. You can use a DeFi to uh, to get them um, um, like real year based and have some passive income. Um, so actually, when we building the Kilo EX, so uh, from the like natural traffic, we can find some of the uh, emerging markets, including. Um, Vietnam, uh, in, uh, Indonesia, or Nigeria, or even other regions, they have a lot of potentials over there. A lot of people uh, have the have their interest to to know uh, more things about DeFi and to start using uh, DeFi protocols uh, to have access to uh, to get the uh, maybe real real yield or have they want to chase in some like hot tokens in the market so they can use the KWS to have get access to this. So I think it's uh, for the all the unbanked users, uh, so the DeFi will be the bridge for them to get into to the like a traditional finance. Thank you. Farsik, have something to add? Sure. Yeah, uh, regarding the area DeFi can expand into ne uh, for next step, uh, one area I'm interested in is uh, the combination with traditional financial instrument, and that's what Kinza Finance will work on next year. Uh, it's actually a natural step uh, for users from both sides of the world. For Tradify users, a lot of their assets are idle, uh, like in their brokerage account. And uh, if they are tokenized and on-chain, they can actually lend, lend them out to earn interest or collateralize them and borrow liquidity. 
uh, this will uh, release the full potential of their assets. And for DeFi users, um, it gives them more access to more asset classes to diversify their risk portfolio. It's a real demand for crypto native users and um, Kinza will try to address this need. Uh, next year, we will release a US Treasury T-bill token, and uh, so stay tuned. Thanks. Alex? Yeah, sure. So um, you mentioned that DeFi has come a long way, and I just want to um, dwell a bit more on the, the structure of the DeFi industry and where I see potential growth opportunities. So <coughs> um, DeFi kicked off pretty much with the launch of Uniswap back in 2018, and Uniswap um, was the first mover in the DEX space. And for the most part, I, I think until maybe a year and a half ago, DEXs were the largest sector in DeFi, and they kept that position um, very well in terms of the amount of um, you know, value captured uh, or locked in, in the protocol. But a few things have happened uh, over the past 18 months. So first, uh, the merge which happened on Ethereum enabled uh, the um, advent of a new category, which is the liquid staking um, and liquid staking derivatives, which, by the way, right now is actually the, the, the largest um, subsector in DeFi. So I think there's a lot of interesting stuff happening there. Um, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Then the second part, um, interestingly, is uh, borrowing and lending protocols. And we have Kenza uh, representing that. And then the third one is DEXs, which is um, KiloX. So you have like the two out of the three main categories um, here. And um, th they've shared how they're seeing the view of the world. But I, I want to spend a bit more time on the liquid staking and liquid staking derivative um, space. Within that space, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff happening. So you, you, you have um, the, the whole sector kind of came along also in a bear market, which um, helped uh, the growth because uh, the, the user behavior was uh, shaped in a way that people just looked for some real yield where they can you know, just deploy some capital and, and let it kind of uh, work for them, which is exactly what the liquid staking um, is in, on, on Ethereum, on, um, on BNB Chain, and other um, proof of stake uh, uh, layer ones. From there, actually, we, we saw some, some interesting um, other opportunities. So you have um, lots of subsectors within uh, DeFi that using like restaking, for instance, and we have the infrastructure protocols that work on that specific um, uh, area, which allows them to both grow on kind of the the whole infrastructure layer, but also specifically in DeFi. So that's an interesting area of opportunity where you have this like very DeFi native um, uh, applications that come from uh, and are led by uh, changes in the infrastructure layer. So yes, uh, I, I'm very, uh, very excited about uh, infrastructure projects that enable this kind of new type of use cases. And that's something that um, I, I keep an eye on. You actually sound very optimistic about that. Uh, since we started to talking about users, uh, DeFi already has a huge user base, uh, and even beer markets, the brutal beer markets, couldn't change that. But where do you see the most promisi promising opportunities for increasing that number? So what can help us to do it? It can be education, it can be, I don't know, uh, some kind of merge between DeFi and C5, maybe something else. Share your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I think this morning the Binance just uh, released the news about they will have the new Web3 wallet. So as a Web3 wallet, it will be the gateway for all the users. So uh, we think the original like uh, Web3 native users, they may just use uh, like a wallet to get access to manage their uh, portfolios on chain. But right now, they don't have enough uh, uh, like uh, uh, protocols or the products they can use to um, uh, to have more to use their like uh, portfolios, and uh, so to the integrity with uh, like a Web3 uh, a Web3 wallet like the Binance wallet, that will be a good start point. So all the users we will think they are as a Web3 native users. They already know how to uh, what is the USDT, what is the Ethereum, or maybe. We just mentioned someone already used uh, Lido to have uh, STTH, 
And uh, right now they have some like new ways to to get more uh, passive income or to cheat some hot tokens. So for the uh, for like for example for ours, uh, so we call it ours like uh, we are a next generation of user friendly perpetual decks. So on the like UI and the UX designs part, we want to uh, to meet the gap between the central exchanges to uh, to the to to our protocol. So uh, when you use our platform, it's just very easy for them to use and uh, to integrate our some innovations for the liquidity providers. We will use uh, like a hybrid vault. So in this way, all the STETH holders, they can not only just have the like a 4.5 annual return, but also they can just stake the STETH into our vault to get a, a like a 10 to 15% of the passive income. And also for, I uh, just mentioned for some emerging markets users, uh, like India, right? So India, they have the most of users in the trust wallet. So uh, they have uh, like millions of uh, daily active users and uh, they already know how to use the USDT and the BNB right now. Uh, they just uh, use uh, uh, like our product, uh, like uh, products and they can just very easier to open a leverage or to, um, to chase like hot tokens in the market right now. And they don't have to worry about the, uh, like a security issues because we have make sure it's easy to be safe for them. And uh, um, to integrity web, web3 wallet, I think will be the next uh, big step for all the DeFi projects. Yeah. Interesting, thank you. Arsik? Okay, uh, regarding the new users that can enter DeFi, I, uh, I think two important areas are mainstream users and also emerging markets. Uh, for mainstream users, a lot of them are still skeptical about crypto. They may see this as a risky playground, especially after FTX incident last year. And uh, to make them comfortable to enter DeFi, I think we need more security infrastructure and um, better education and also better user experience to onboard them. And uh, imagine like they can earn DeFi yield from their banking account or like pay uh, their e-commerce uh, consumption with crypto. That's where when crypto will really shine. And that, and also that's what uh, Kinza Finance is working on. We are trying to make the onboarding experience as easy as possible. And also the emerging market, uh, like Africa, Southeast Asia, and a lot of users there may don't have access to traditional banking infrastructure, but they have access to crypto and also um, mobile phone. So I think uh, we need to have a good mobile experience to access them, and also community is a really good uh, intermediary power to access all these users. They have the incentive and also the influential power to uh, reach out to more people. So uh, listen to your community and expand the user base is the key to go. Yeah. Can you agree with the statement that UX is becoming uh, like a front end and like blockchain technology itself is becoming back end for new users? Uh, what become front end? Uh, UX uh, is uh, the head of the process now, and like blockchain technology itself, uh, it's become the back end because new users, they don't really care what's going on. They just need access to the assets. Yes, yeah, I, uh, um, I can imagine that become the mainstream use case, yeah, in the next cycle. So this is step to mass adoption. Right. Cool. Alex, please. Yeah, so <clears throat> on the UX point, actually, I, I do agree, that's probably the number one priority for DeFi to solve. Um, you know, other than the, the, the few points that were mentioned earlier, I think um, DeFi over the, so since its inception had this kind of no notorious uh, image of being very hard to use, you know, you have to use a, a self-custody wallet, which a lot of the times is very clunky, very slow, you have to go and connect and then uh, if the protocol has like a bunch of chains, then you have to change the chain and so on. So a lot of that actually can be um, uh, simplified by just you know building better UX, where the user actually cares about using the product and not so much about the infrastructure behind it. So uh, having like a fully uh, abstracted um, away the complexity of changing chains or bridging between different chains or um, you know, selecting um, different types of wallets. A and we, we have really good, prog we've done really good progress on that front, like we'll, um, we'll have a also Trust Wallet on some of the panel, they can talk more about how the wallet infrastructure has um, 
um, has developed. You know, now we have like um, account abstraction, which will offer you even more kind of flexibility and logic when building um, uh, kind of specific use cases and how you use the wallet to, to interact with protocols, um, all the way to actually going to the protocols and having sort of a, a fully omni-chain uh, experience where the liquidity is kind of lives everywhere on, on every single chain where you need it, it's actually there and or it can get there e instantly. So uh, we have everything. We have all the tools, all the infrastructure, you know, uh, BNB chain has done massive progress building a super secure, f super fast infrastructure layer. And uh, now with OP BNB with, um, uh, th that o offers a lot of like very easy um, uh, tooling and approach to, to building all of this. So what we're just lacking is actually building a, a really awesome front end that people get excited to use and doesn't feel like you know, you're know you chewing glass. You know, the problem is like we're discussing it for like one year or maybe two years, like everyone's discussing UX, but nothing's happening. Why so? Uh, so, uh, so you mentioned about like the user basis or? Uh, so for the user basis for the, I think as long as uh, um, the technology and the more educational thread at the spread to uh, to the peoples and uh, uh, and I think like Binance.com have done a lot of educations for the users. So when the user get used to all the knowledges, they already have the uh, knowledge basis about how to use a wallet, how to use uh, fiat to get crypto. And uh, especially right now we are in the Turkey. So uh, Turkey has a lot of locals exchanges. We have a fiat gateways. They were easier for them to get used to all the like new technologies and uh, get used to fiat to get uh, cryptos as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, we discussed the UX and the education, but what are other biggest challenges DeFi projects uh, have in the current state? Uh, okay, so uh, so I will just start. Yeah, um, so I think one challenge is uh, uh, so for the all the DeFi projects. So to be honest, uh, we are a still very small team. So we don't done a lot of work on the securities, and we have working with. Uh, a lot of like all these companies, all the uh, bounty, uh, like uh, like uh, uh, bug, bug bounties to help us to make sure the security is not a problem for all the users. But uh, for the security, it's uh, is not an end game. So you have to every like new code, uh, the new functions you you added to to your projects, you always to be very careful because uh, so for the. For the all the like DeFi projects, like uh, all the attackers can attack your platform like uh, air, like uh, from like a uh, 24 seven seven days. So you always to care about like securities. So that is uh, very important. And the second part is, uh, uh, I want to also want to mention about the risk. Uh, so for all the liquid providers and the traders, they are like uh, different sectors. So for the liquid providers, some are maybe from like traditional finance or the institution. So they they have to know how to manage the risk on the under like a new DeFi projects because there is a, uh, this is like a new uh, innovation things is going on right now. So you don't have to, you, you not only have to worry about the, uh, from financial risk, but also to have the, to talking about like a co-risk and uh, everything together. Um, I think that is also the challenges for the DeFi projects and working with uh, other institutions as well. And uh, for the trader side, I think it's just uh, in the different uh, like market scenarios, they have to know, um, to have some feelings what's going on right now and uh, to choose uh, uh, based on their risk preference to make the right choices. I think that is, uh, they have to control their own risk, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Mm, okay, uh, I can start first, okay. Feel free. Sure, uh, regarding opportunities and uh, challenges, I think security is the most important one and that's what Kinza Finance focus on primarily. And um, I can talk about some features we are working on to help improve security. Uh, the first one is asset isolation. So we insulate risks from uh, between each asset so that if any one asset has any problem, it will not affect anything else. And uh, also we focus on economic risks. So if you look at uh, hacks from last cycle, a lot of them are not related to bugs in code. Uh, even if the system worked as expected, there may be times that users' liquidity cannot be withdrawn. So it's really because risk parameters were not set correctly. And uh, to really set them correctly, you need to 
uh, reference data on chain, and we are developing algorithms that can dynamically adjust according to situations on chain. So uh, this way, we provide users a safer environment for them to deploy their funds. And uh, these are just some examples of features. I think most importantly is the mindset to put security uh, beyond everything else. And I think that's what DeFi projects need to do. Yeah. I have to agree here. Alex, your turn. Yeah, so um, I totally agree. Security is probably number one. Um, I think following that, we can bring in kind of the regulatory hangovers risk, which is a, a big challenge in DeFi. As DeFi builders, you, you're always living with that risk of um, the ever-shifting nature of regulatory um, approach to how to, to bring actually DeFi into sort of compliance with existing but also new regulations. Um, especially that, you know, re regulators differ quite a lot in terms of their attitude approach. Just overall, like, um, the, the view of the world is quite different from, you know, jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So I'd say that's that's a big challenge as well. Um, next, um, it would probably be the kind of the overall idea about, like, use cases for DeFi. Um, a, a lot of the use cases in DeFi have been very kind of focused uh, w for like w with, with a very uh, good degree of um, of reason. We're focused on crypto native, uh, you know, like spin talk, spin up some some tokens, and they can list them. You can borrow, lend against them, uh, bringing it closer to kind of real world. Um, Assets and utility is, is something that um, has been a challenge, but I think it's it's shifting with um, a high degree of um, of speed right now, and actually seeing a lot of the kind of real world being brought uh, on chain. Uh, since you mentioned the regulations, uh, how do you see like traditional financial institution uh, can integrate the DeFi solutions? Uh, yeah, I think that is a, a, a really good question. So, um, as we know, for the all the market makers, for the centralized changes like uh, jump trading, sort of winter mute, some of the their uh, core team are come from traditional finance. Maybe they are come from Two Sigma or Satato or Jan Street. So uh, right now they are bringing their like a successful experience from the traditional finance to the uh, to the centralized changes. And, uh, but right now, if they uh, want to deploy is on the same strategy on the DeFi projects, this is a challenge for them. As I just mentioned, uh, the uh, the risk for the uh, for the liquid providers is different than you just uh, do the market makings on the central exchanges. So there is a new way. So uh, we also very open to have some discussions with all the market leaders, talk about how to in, uh, to bring these uh, institutions uh, are really like market makers to our protocols. And also, um, as we know, uh, for the for the little uh, little protocols, uh, for the all uh, like uh, LSD tokens, a lot of uh, traditional finance already entered because uh, if if they can uh, do some risk on the price change for the Ethereum, they can have the annual returns around like 4.5. And uh, and also, uh, as just just mentioned, some uh, uh, like RWA, which is uh, have. Uh, like for the die right now, you if you stick the die on the Oasis app, you can have a, like a uh, five percent returns. And uh, based on our uh, like a protocols, if we had do some innovations to brought this asset into our protocols, so we believe uh, to have the risk management from the market uh, market maker side and also uh, from the institution side, we can expand it our asset to be uh, integrated with ours. I think that will be a, a good like a start point. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Sure. Um, actually, last cycle, institutions were already playing a big role in DeFi, um, but when bear market came, a lot of them exited. I believe when we enter bull market again, they will be back and, and be stickier this time. And they can collaborate in several ways with DeFi. Um, the first is DeFi is a very good place to park liquidity. Uh, Im especially if RWA become mainstream, like imagine 5% uh, risk-free risk yield as a benchmark, and then on top of that, you have real yield from DeFi protocols like trading fee, borrow interest, and also on top of that, you have token incentive from protocol and ecosystem. That will make 
DeFi the most attractive place for people to park their liquidity and earn yield. And uh, second collaboration is uh, traditional finance can help DeFi reach more users. Um, they have established channel like their off-chain store, their daily apps that billions of people are already using. So um, they can play the role of education and also outreach to onboard more people into the world of DeFi. Yeah. Thank you. Alex? Yeah, so just very quickly, I think um, institutions have done a lot of learning um, and I, I agree like in the previous cycle, there was just very initial steps of um, them adopting or coming into DeFi. They were on, like within CeFi, there was a good presence from um, kind of traditional, what would you call like traditional institutions, um, whether it's market makers or, um, or, 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 or other type of like hedge, hedge funds and so on. Um, coming to DeFi, they have to learn a lot of, um, a lo a lot of new things, which is, uh, as you mentioned, like a, a lot of the DEXs uh, actually operate on a AMM basis. This was a concept which was kind of well known, I think, from the 70s, but no one actually built it in TradFi. Um, everything is done through order books, uh, hence most of the institutional investor or institutional entities um, didn't know much other than the kind of reading on the, from the academic uh, resources. Uh, they never tried out actually an AMM. So there was a lot of learning to, to, to be done on how you actually deploy capital, how do you manage, actively manage liquidity, you know, thinking about impermanent loss, uh, how you hedge against it, uh, all, all that, like there's a ton of stuff that they had to get comfort around. So I think we're closer to them being, to getting that comfort level and um, we are hopefully seeing them coming on board as, uh, as there's new kind of optimism being injected in the market. Yeah, let's cross the fingers and won't take too much time. But we're running out of time, actually, so <laughs> uh, the next one will be the last question, unfortunately. Uh, we can continue off recording if you want to. Uh, so as we look towards the future, what DeFi innovations and advancements do you anticipate the most? Uh, so I want to start about like right now the AI is really hot in the market right now and uh, when we talking about some protocols we call it like intent and centric. So uh, so right, right now the users maybe they already have some basic experience about like how to do the tradings but only if you really want to uh, to say to a, like a, like a AI assistant just to tell him like right now I have one thousand USDT I want to uh, get like 10% returns in a month, and uh, I don't want to lose any of my, my monies. You can just uh, feed these things to uh, AI yeah, assistant and the uh, integrity with ours. Uh, so that is kind of a way uh, the users can very easier to, to use these protocols to, um, how to say, like when people get profit, they will love this product. But if they can lose the money, they will, uh, it will like uh, never come back. So use uh, like uh, uh, this, like uh, we call it like intent centric with uh, AI assistants we can believe that we can open the a gate for the, all the new users. Yeah. Thank Just about cut it short, yeah. Sure. Um, like for future advancement, uh, one thing I look forward to is layer two and modular blockchain. Um, layer twos can provide lower gas fee and higher throughput and uh, is obviously beneficial, especially uh, for, the, for, for lending protocol like Finza Finance. Uh, main benefit is we can avoid bad debt. Like uh, when there's sudden market drawdown, uh, liquidation bots may not have enough time to liquidate positions, but on layer two is no longer a problem. And uh, also it foster innovations. Uh, we can see more innovative derivative products like order book based decks. And also the interoperability between layer twos are much safer than bridging between layer ones. So it can give us a, a more secure context for DeFi product, products. And uh, that's why like Kinza is the first landing protocol to launch on OPBNB. We believe that's an important step for the whole ecosystem. Alex? Yeah, last thing I just want to bring back the UX, I think um, a lot of the innovation that will come in DeFi will, the expectation is that it will, will come um, with uh, building actually new user experience um, and better user interaction. So, um, yeah, look forward to seeing that in DeFi 3.0. Thank you. That was quite insightful. Thank you <laughs> for your thoughts. 
And we're done here. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.